Hello everyone, my name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I am also the leader of Busted Knuckles, which is an adult recovery ministry. We're out of Roadhouse Biker Church in San Bernardino. The address for Roadhouse is 255 West Benedict Road in San Bernardino. Our meetings are every Thursday evening at 6.30. Um, invite you to come on out and check us out. It's a great recovery meeting. We have wonderful lessons and, and we break off into, after the lessons, we break off into the small men's group, women's group, and just wonderful discussions and, and, and just, it's a great fellowship for sure. Um, I'd like to open this up in a word of prayer before we jump in and get started. Our devotion today is out of the book of Isaiah, and it's really a good one. It's Isaiah 6, 1 through 7, which I'm going to read here in a minute. And just the devotion itself is about humility. And sometimes we don't quite understand what humility is, but it's different than humiliation, remember. Um, I suggest that maybe Google so you can understand the difference between humiliation and humility. Humility is what God wants from us, a humble heart where we give ourselves over. We admit that we're powerless and we can't handle this. We don't have control. God has control. Amen. So let me just read to you our Roadmap 7. We're in the seventh month, so we're looking at Roadmap 7, which parallels with, with the um, seventh step of recovery, which is we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. So Roadmap 7 goes like this. Piece by piece, he looked at every broken part, and I honestly asked him what needed to go. When he revealed what they were, I fearfully handed them over to his will, I got honest with God. We use Proverbs 4.4 4 for this, for this uh, road map, and it says, we, He also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. I finally realized how much I was fooling myself. Let's get honest. Get honest with God, but let's get honest with ourselves, too. If we've got shortcomings, whatever they may be, anger, um, Jealousy, greed, pride. Yesterday we talked about negative thinking, which all of us suffer from at one point or another. And I brought up the P48 super filter, which is Philippian 4.8. I recommend that you read that because that reminds you to keep your mind on everything that's true and pure and honest and praiseworthy. That keeps you, that puts you in a different frame of mind, definitely. Changes your attitude, changes your behavior. That's what recovery is all about. So anyway, before we jump into the scripture, let me just uh, say a word of thanks to God. Heavenly Father, we just come to you with grateful hearts, Father, that, that you remind us each day of the blessings that you give us, the grace and the mercy that is extended to us through the, through the sacrifice of your Son on the cross. So Father, I thank you for this. I pray for blessings on each person watching this video, blessings for their families, in your Son's name, amen. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. It's Isaiah 6, and I'm starting at verse 1 through 7. And I'm reading from an NIV version. In the year that King Uzziah died, which is approximately 739 BC, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, which is humbling themselves, because they're before the Lord, they humbled themselves. Two that covered their feet, and with two of them they were flying. And they were calling to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. I am torn apart. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sins are atoned. He was cleansed of his, of his sin with, with fire, with heat. We talked about that before also. There's a lot of reference in scripture with God using fire to purify and what have you. And so, you know, we because Jesus died on that cross for us, we may not see God in person as, as, Ida, as Isaiah did with, with the seraphim and what have you. And we may not have the, the live cold touch our lips, but we are still forgiven. He's giving us a gift of forgiveness. But let me read 
what it says in in my scripture kind of describes what's happening and what's going you know and what it represents it says the throne the attending seraphim and the threefold holy all stressed god's holiness seraphim are a type of angel whose name is derived from the word burn perhaps indicating their purity as god's ministers in a time when moral and spiritual decay had peaked it was important for isaiah to see god in his holiness now holiness means morally perfect pure and set apart from all sin we need to discover god's holiness this this world that we live in right now this was 739 bc in the year 2023 a.d we need to see god's holiness Amen. Our daily frustrations, society's pressures, and our shortcomings reduce and narrow our view of God. We let things get in the way. Amen. We need the, we need the Bible's view of God as high and lifted up to empower us to deal with our problems and concerns. God's moral perfection, properly seen, will purify us from sin, cleanse our minds from our problems, and enable us to worship and serve. Now, sometimes you wonder, okay, what exactly do I have to do? you know, to, to see God's pureness, his holiness again. I recommend read the scripture again. And if you have in your, in your Bible, sometimes on the margin, there's different biblical references, you know, see Deuteronomy or go to Mark, or there's, there's different references, follow these through and they give you descriptions of what, what we should do. But basically, we need to humble ourselves. We need to realize that we cannot do this alone. Not just recovery. We can't do life alone. And we're not meant to do that. We're not meant to be alone. We were not made to be isolated people. We're, we're social beings. And so you should surround yourself with good fellowship. You know, others, other believers help you to stay encouraged in your walk but then also there's there's others that don't know Jesus and that's where we're called to serve and if they just watch you in your walk and and see that you're striving to know God more you're, you're striving to grow spiritually they're watching this happen and they're seeing that ray of hope that that light that shines from your eyes or in your smile they see there's something there that they want also so you are a beacon to somebody and so that's and we are called to serve we're called to to let people know why we have a sense of hope amen so let me read our devotional it's from the life recovery devotional and today it's called strength from humility and again, the reading is from Isaiah 6, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Okay? And I, you know, and if you have like a message Bible, sometimes that helps. You can always Google. There's a, there's a website called BibleGate, and you can look up verses with these different uh, translations. It kind of helps give you an idea of exactly what they're talking about. Message Bible is kind of a layman's, you know, kind of a hip, not a hip, kind of a more modern view it's still taken from scripture but it's 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 worded in a way that a lot of people can understand a lot easier okay so anyway let me go ahead and get started it says if we want to experience humility and have a sincere desire to have our shortcomings removed we need to seek after god when we catch a glimpse of his holiness we will be humbled and transformed when we see what he's done for us what he is doing for us you can't help but just be transformed into this new person this new creation and we're humbled by it because we realize that we could not do what he's doing for us okay the prophet isaiah shares this experience it was in the year king uzziah died that i saw the lord he was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple attending him were mighty seraphim each having six wings they were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundation and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. Woe is me, for I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips and with it said, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Isaiah, Isaiah's experience took the form of a supernatural vision. 
at just a glimpse of God's holiness, he became acutely aware of his own deep need for cleansing. We may never see God as as Isaiah did, but we can experience God's presence in a place of worship. And that does not mean that you have to go to church to worship. Definitely go to church, but if you have that burning desire in your heart to yell out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, by all means do. It's your form of worship. Listen to your, your, you know, the Christian channels on the radio. Put on your, your Christian music and blast it. Let the neighbors hear it too. And let them hear you singing and praising Jesus. Let, him, let them hear you giving him worship. Amen, amen. As we develop the habit of worshiping God, we will find growing humility in our lives and a growing desire to have him purify us fully. How amazing that we can see God's greatness and our contrasting sinfulness, yet still feel his forgiveness. You know, so definitely don't feel that your sin is too great that you will never be forgiven for it because there is no sin too great that God will not forgive. He knows our hearts, and when you get on your knees and humble yourself and ask for forgiveness, say you're sorry he knows your heart and he is going to forgive you. He's going to, he's going to grant you that grace and mercy. And he's going to turn you into that new creation that he wanted you to be in the first place. So hallelujah. So, Hey, it is, I usually don't give dates or anything, but it's July 29. It's a Saturday. If you want to cool yourself off and you're in the San Bernardino area, head up to Lake Arrowhead. Today is the classic car and boat show in Arrowhead and Roadhouse Biker Church. Roadhouse will have their um, their booth up there. You'll see us. It has the big banner that says Sinners Welcome because that's all of us. Amen. So come by. Spin the wheel. Get some prayer. Get a bottle of water. But come up and check us out. All right, you guys have a great day.